I grew up in the north. This is just another northern day. I think this hunt is going to be a, a big challenge, both for my dad and myself, just in different ways. He's right near the top of that dome. That's a big, big bear. We just saw the biggest bear that any of us have ever seen in the Yukon. That's right. Good one. We should get on the move. Let's go. Let's do it. Today's the day. I did come to harvest a sheep, and I'm still locked into that. That's my mindset. I think this is about as good a day as any to start a sheep hunt. Well, it's different. This hunt starts with my father opting not to hunt sheep in August like normal people, Come but on. he thought that he wanted to push it until October just to put a little bit more That's challenge into the game. Stop, let's do this over again. That's not true. You could have hunted sheep in August, it just would have been without me. I should have maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new, nothing but the best for you. Thank you. I didn't expect this, to be honest with you. I mean, one thing coming in, right? Because we got a little bit of snow. When we go out of here, it could be up to here, right? Yeah. Might be there, but let's hope it's not there. I don't think it's going to be less. It's not going to be any less. You just hold those two poles right there, okay? If it's to there on you, I'm okay with that, because then that's like to here on me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> He's standing up on a mound. Let me get up here beside. There you go. Now we're on even ground. Get out of here. <laughs> Remember last year? I do. We went in with a game plan and it worked to perfection. This year we're going in with a game plan and we don't know where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> there was a ram last year that we won't say got away. No, you said don't shoot that one. You said shoot the broomed one, shoot the broomed one. I said, no, I want to shoot that nice, beautiful, didn't happen. And you shot the broomed one. We shot the broom. <laughs> it was a great shot. It so was a miracle. It doesn't mean that we're going to get the other one this year. If he's still out here, should be one year older, one year bigger. One year more beautiful, right? There you go. The conditions are not ideal and are not supposed to be ideal for the next number of days, but that's what happens when you decide to hunt in October. I like the way you say that, a number of days. A few minutes ago, it was like two days. Now it's a number of days. What's that mean? <laughs> well, it means you don't know. It could be any number. Well, you better get a hold of the weatherman and check it out. <laughs> yeah, good luck in the Yukon. So they say if you don't like the weather at the front door, you go to the back door in the Yukon. Front door's not looking awesome. Well, we only have one door in that tent. There's no back door. That's true. So you gotta deal with what you got. Potentially, we have a couple days of snow, and then I believe that things are supposed to clear up. So we might have some campfire time when I can be blessed with your wisdom. Today's 50% chance of snow. Tomorrow's 40%. Oh, caribou hunting tomorrow. There you go. Grizzly hunting. Mm -hmm. What's your take on opening the tent this morning? Oh man, it's not as bad as what I thought. Well, well, we had about three inches of snow, fresh stuff. Carl's got a chance to get a caribou still. Yeah, we're, we're fortunate to have Carl along on this trip because he does have a tag. The weather isn't conducive to sheep hunting for the most part right now because of all the snow and the low cloud hanging on the mountain. So Carl's up to bat. Everybody's up to bat at all times. <laughs> Whoever has tags anyways. These kind of weather days are fantastic for it. We glass what we can of the mountains. We'll stay down low today in the valley, there's no point in going hiking up into the mountain and camping up there in the clouds. Kind of get up on these benches in the side hills. Be looking everywhere versus just in the tops of the mountains. Right. I'll be looking for sheep for sure, but uh, you guys can be looking down lower for caribou and who knows what happens. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go guys. Lead the way. I want to hike down the valley a little ways and then we'll get up on the side hill where we can see something and kind of spend the day there. Sounds good. It's 
not sheep, but uh, right there. Caribou? No, bison. You see him? Up high? No, down low there. He's laying down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see him with up and out yeah, yeah, he's like 400 yards. Yeah, but... Oh yeah, he's a nice size animal. Wow. Well, they're huge. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting, ain't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. cool. Good sight. Good one. Well, when's open season? Not until no, like, December or November. November. Oh, November. You just hang out there, buddy. We'll be back to see you. Oh, there's another one down below it. Look down here on the hillside. You might need to move this way, right there. He's in the tree. Mm -hmm. That's a bull for sure. God, he's big. Poof. Let's get up closer. Good, good yeah. Now all we need is caribou and sheep. That's all. Oh, I guess there's moose out there too. Well, there was moose tracks by the tent this morning, wasn't it? You called last night. So obviously your call's working. Well, there you, you go. You learned something from me, right? Yeah. 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 These conditions are less than ideal for my dad, for sure. I think this hunt is gonna be a, a big challenge, both for my dad and myself, just in different ways. That's what we're here for, to challenge ourselves. Yeah, he's just letting me know that the bison is right there. What are you gonna do, move up toward him a little bit further, just to have a look at him? Well, let's go out on that high knob over there, and then we can maybe uh, see through to them better. It's pretty neat to be able to get this close. He knows we're here. Yeah. We don't appear to them as predators right now. We're just two little guys walking through the bush. Really? Because if we're driving a snow machine, then you're a predator. Old bull just has no predators. Right. Nature is the only predator, and time. If this was November. It'd be a different story, right? I would love to harvest a big bull, bison like that. That would be, it's at the top of the list, right? I mean, the chances of anybody getting that opportunity and turning it down would be crazy. If you get out and you work hard enough, you can get one. The wolf packs here haven't really figured them out. We don't have the size of wolf packs that they do in, say, Yellowstone. And that's what you think about when you think about bison. You don't think about the Yukon, per se. Well, you don't think about them in the mountains. No, no. No, you always visualize them in plains or flat. Yeah. And this is really rolling high country. So do you see him up there, Dad? No. He's right near the top of that dome on, this, on, this, on the side. So we got the main dome here? Yeah. Straight in front of me, up high? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a grizzly bear up on the side of this mountain here. I want to put the spotting scope on him, but it looks like a big bodied grizzly. So dad's got a grizzly tag, pretty cool. I don't see a, you know, a cub or anything with it. My assumption is that it's a big boar, but you can't tell until I get the scope on him and make sure that there's no cub around, then we can make a decision. That's a big bear, guys. That's a big, big bear. We got to take him. We just saw the biggest bear that any of us have ever seen in the Yukon. He's at the top of that mountain. We've got three grizzly tags. We have three grizzly tags. <laughs> I'd sooner see you take them. I mean, I came here for a sheep. Carl came for a caribou and would say the bear is for you. So if you can get a, a grizzly, that leaves the door open for the two of us to harvest what we came for, right? Well, it's very generous of you. Oh, wow. It's a, big, it's a big bear. I look where that bear is. <laughs> That's not so generous. He's walking downhill. I was really looking forward to hunting grizzlies next spring, but I would really like that bear. I mean, it, you can't do much better than that. Like, if you're holding out for a bigger bear, then I don't know. Then it's a mistake. So that means that you have to hunt in the springtime. If I take this one, you have to hunt in the spring. Okay. Deal? It's a good deal. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Let's see what he continues to do and maybe he gives us a shot. Yeah. Well, I'm in the game. Awesome. Didn't think I was going to be in the game at all. <laughs> Always bring your tags. Always bring all your tags. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd love to harvest the grizzly bear, obviously, but I did come to harvest the sheep and I'm still locked into that. That's my mindset. So if Greg has an opportunity to do this, I, he wanted me to go and harvest it, right? I'm going to need your gun then. <laughs> I'm opting out and it's not due to the fact that it's a long hike or anything. It's just that I don't want to slow you guys down. You guys have an opportunity to harvest this spare. That's wonderful. If, if you don't, you don't. But I'm stepping away from this. I'm going to go back to camp, get things set up for dinner tonight, I suppose, and get a nice cozy fire going and relax, take it easy. I'm afraid that he walks toward us. We don't see him when we're out of sight. But we'll get on his tracks. That's the beautiful thing about winter. We can just try and cut tracks if we can't see him once we get up there. The further he gets downhill, the harder it becomes for us. 
He's moved quite a ways closer than where he was. That's for darn sure. He's just constantly on the move. He's still about probably a mile away. We're gonna try to get downwind of him and kind of cut him off. If he does continue to feed downhill, it's not gonna be easy. I still don't see him. We're starting to make our way in there now. We could literally walk on top of him and he knows we're here. Yeah. Which is the worst case scenario. We're just gonna head up, cut down wind, and then if I have to, we can go down over top and cut his track. That's all we can do right now. He's still up there. Because these tracks, first glance, look good, but there's snow in them. My clock, not so much that print, but like, but it's not snowing. He's still up there. I don't know, I mean, there's a bit of blowing snow right now, but not much, because he would have come here in the last 10 minutes. Right. So is this 10 minutes old, or is this six hours old? I think it's more like hours old. I think he's up there still. Well, that's the worst case scenario. We follow that track and it leads us back here. And we're another hour behind him. And we got all day. The odds dramatically just decreased. Being upwind of him right now is worst case scenario, especially if you're just tracking. You can't see him. He's in the timber and you're just trying to track. Well, we're never gonna get him if we stand here. Catching up to a grizzly bear is not an easy thing to do. I do know that. Gotta keep our eyes open. He just went up there, doubled back went this way. So like, if he knows we're onto him, he's not running, but he's getting into more open country, which is awesome. But keep your head up. There's only one gun here and stay close. Just so much undulation to this country that you know, just disappears so easily. 